Here is a wise virgin from among the members of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this great feast of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the contrite. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And let us pray. God, our Father, who called St. Francis Xavier Cabrini from Italy to serve the immigrants of America, by her example, teach us to have concern for the stranger, the sick, and all those in need. And by her prayers, help us to see Christ in all the men and women we meet. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. John. Chosen Lady, I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. But now, Lady, I ask you, not as though I were writing a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning. Let us love one another. For this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, as you heard from the beginning, in which you should walk. Many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. Such is the deceitful one and the antichrist. Look to yourselves that you do not lose what we worked for, but may receive a full recompense. Anyone who is so progressive as not to remain in the teaching of the Christ does not have God. Who remain, whoever remains in the teaching has the Father and the Son. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. With all my heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commands. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Within my heart I treasure your promise that I may not sin against you. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Be good to your servant that I may live and keep your words. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your law. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, 
as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Similarly, as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building, on the day when Lot left Sodom, fire and brimstone rained down from the sky to destroy them all. So it will be on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, someone who is on the housetop and whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get them, and likewise, one in the field must not return to what was left behind. Remember the wife of Lot. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses it will save it. I tell you, on that night there will be two people in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. And there will be two women grinding meal together. One will be taken, the other left. They said to him in reply, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. Happy Friday. Well, today we are celebrating the great uh, Saint, uh, Saint Francis Xavier Cabrini. Uh, She was born uh, in uh, uh, what is present day Italy, and she and her family migrated here uh, from there. And um, she died around 1917, and she was canonized in 1946. And she was the first American uh, 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 saint canonized. So she's very special to us in, in many, many ways. And I just want to make sure that the kids particularly understand that when Frances Xavier Cabrini came over here with her family, now, we're looking at it from a 21st century, but at that time, women pretty much didn't have much a power or authority, except in the church. Now, people will tell us constantly that the church doesn't give women power, that it's all about the guys. But that is as far from the truth as you could possibly imagine, because it was only through the church that women rose to the ranks of power of running convents, of running hospitals, of running schools. They were, they were the heads of so many things that men weren't able to do for whatever reason. And Francis Xavier Cabrini not only founded a convent, but she opened orphanages, she opened schools, she opened hospitals, all throughout the United States and through the South America, and all to take care of immigrants to take care of the poor, to take care of the the disenfranchised. She truly cared for the least in our society. And that's ultimately why we celebrate her as such a great saint. She was a great example of what it meant to be a Christian, of not worrying about the powers of this world, of not worrying about making people in this world happy, but literally going out into the streets into places where nobody else would want to go, and literally giving not only of her time, but her talent and her treasure, all to lift up those who were living in darkness, who were living in ignorance, who were lost because of whatever reason. And that's what Jesus is telling us today in our gospel, that the world itself, whether it was in Noah's time, in Lot's time, or in the time of today, they're all busy with their lives. And nothing wrong with living a a dynamic life. But there's more to it than just your life. We were placed here by God to be servants, as Francis Cabrini was, to literally care for those who are sick, to those who are dying, to those who are lonely, to those who are suffering, to those who are hungry, to those who are naked, to those who are are thirsty. This is why we exist. This is why we are. Not to chase after the dreams of this world, but to chase after the reality of the world to come. 
And it all begins, as St. John said in our first reading, of believing that Jesus was the Christ, not just the Son of God, but the Son of Man. What John's trying to get across to his reader today is that even back in John's day, the very earliest stages of the church, there was an arguments about whether Jesus was true God and true man. Perhaps he was just God. Perhaps he was just man. But John was telling them, you've got to believe what Christ taught us, that he truly was the Messiah. He was the anointed. He was the only begotten Son of God. And that's the basis of who we are. That's the basis of all that we do. Because if we don't believe in that, then there's really no reason to even get together and do any, things, any of the things that we do as Christians and as Catholics. The worship here at Mass is just the beginning of our calling. We are called to come each week, some of us for each day, to offer praise and to offer our own sacrifices in the Mass to God, to give Him all praise, glory, and honor. But that's, again, it's just the beginning. Because when we go out from this holy place, we're called to take ourselves into the streets, into our homes, into our schools, into our marketplaces, and live the gospel. No matter what everybody else in this world is doing, we must stay focused on loving God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and to loving our neighbor as ourselves. This is what we are called to be. We do that in so many ways. By almsgiving, giving money to the poor, by going out and serving meals to the homeless, of taking care of those who are cold in the wintertime, of prayer. Each of us, no matter who we are, no matter how much talent we have, we all can offer up prayers each and every day not only for each other, that we have the strength to serve Christ in our neighbors, but also for those who have less than we do, perhaps less faith, less wisdom, less time, less patience, less compassion, less love. Because prayer can move mountains. So let us never give up praising God by serving our brothers and sisters. Please stand. And now for the intercession of Francis Xavier Cabrini, let us offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the church, as it works to build the kingdom of God here and now, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit guide them in prudence and charity in their decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer the pain of loss, may Christ's compassion be with them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here today, may God's presence help us in our striving to be better disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, may God's infinite love welcome them into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Jack Maestrick, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, on this beautiful day, we give praise and glory to you. Fill our hearts with gratitude for all that you have given us, that we may go out into the world and give ourselves to others. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat>
Lord, <clears throat> wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, blessed Francis Xavier Cabrini, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of his son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life.
And let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Francis Xavier Cabrini, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone through Christ our Lord. All right, everybody, have a great Friday, have a nice weekend, and we'll see you next week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.